Hello and welcome to this web development lecture presented to you by Aaron Guzman and Frank Inguanes. During this lecture we shall be designing and implementing a horizontal menu of a website. During the first part of this lecture we shall understand the layout of a website, review the different types of menus, review the designing process, then proceed to graphically designing the menu. During the second part of our lecture we shall review the graphics used in web development, review the syntax used for menus, implement the menu, then review and fine-tune the website. In a website we generally have what's called a header area which is used to host the logo and menu of the website. The content area is used for a welcoming message and respective images. The footer area is found at the lower part of the website, used for a copyright notice and disclaimer of the site designers. Different menus exist, starting from the simple menu, which is a simple list of links, where each link will direct the user to a particular page. A category menu will provide a list of links per list item. An elaborated menu will provide a different navigational structure per list item. We shall now proceed to a demonstration of different menu types in a website. We shall be reviewing the Play.com website as a demonstration of the different menu types found within a website. We can see that in the header area we have a search facility which assists the user in finding items much more easily. Just beneath it we have the main menu which will display the different categories found within this site. We will also notice that each category has a list of subcategories for that section. Clicking on any one of these categories will display the main menu differently. We will see that the same list of subcategories are found beneath the main menu. We will also notice that on the left hand side we have what's called the context menu, which changes depending on the section currently found in. Let's see the DVD section and notice that the context menu will change. As you can see, we have a different menu for the context menu for this DVD section. We will notice that on the right hand side we also have further menus in the form of list of links. At the bottom of the website we shall also find another menu which gives us much more options to navigate within this website. This is the toolbar that we will be designing during this lecture. Eventually we will slice it into three distinct files, the left side, the spacer and the right side. The idea is that when implementing the toolbar in the website we shall be repeating the spacer to fill the gap between the left side and the right side. This will drastically reduce the size of the toolbar as well as allow the toolbar to be dynamic in width. We will now proceed to a demonstration in creating the toolbar. For this tutorial we shall be using Adobe Photoshop CS4. Let's start by creating a new canvas by clicking on the File New option. Let's name this canvas as Menu Toolbar. The dimensions shall be specified in pixels, particularly 900 by 70. The resolution shall be of 30 pixels per centimeter and do ensure that the color mode is in RGB 16-bit. Give a white color as a background content. Click OK. Let's display a set of rulers which will aid us in designing this menu. This is done by clicking the view menu then selecting the rulers option. Right click on any one of the rulers and select pixels as the unit of measure. Let's create a few guides which will aid us in our design. Click on the view menu then new guide. Select 10 pixels and you will notice that we have now a new vertical guide at 10 pixels. Repeat the process for 450 pixels which is at the center of the screen and at 10 pixels from the right which is at 890 pixels. Let's repeat the process for horizontal guides. We set the orientation to horizontal, set a position of 10, another guide at 35 pixels and one last guide at 60 pixels. Let's proceed to selecting the color by clicking on the foreground color which will display the color picker tool. 
slide the slider to select a hue within the color spectrum. Then select a particular value within that hue. If you know the hexadecimal value, you can input it directly. In our case, we will use a B60000. Click OK when finished. We will proceed to creating two shapes. First, a rounded rectangle tool. We set the curvature of the rounded rectangle by setting a radius of 40 pixels. Start by clicking and dragging from the upper leftmost of the guides to the lower rightmost position. This will display the shape on our canvas as well as creating a new layer in the Layers window. Right click on Shape 1 and select Layer Properties option. Name the layer as Rounded Rectangle. Repeat the process, this time for a rectangle shape. Click and drag from the upper left to the lower right. Rename the shape to Rectangle. By clicking and holding the Shift button, select both layers, release the Shift button, then right-click on any one of the layers and select the Rasterize Layers option. This will allow us to cut parts and sections of our shapes. Set the rounded rectangle layer as invisible and click on the rectangle layer. Now select the rectangle marquee tool, click and drag from the upper rightmost to the center of your canvas whilst holding the control button. Select the magnifying glass and select the center area. If the selection is within the guides, then click the delete button. With the magnifying glass, right click on the canvas and select fit on screen. Repeat the process with the rectangle marquee tool, this time from the lower left side to the center of the canvas whilst holding control. Select the magnifying glass and highlight the center area. Select the rectangle marquee tool, move your cursor within the selected area and shift the selected area as appropriate. Click the delete button and you will delete two sections of your canvas. Using the magnifying glass, right click on your canvas and select the fit on screen option. If you set the rounded rectangle shape as visible, you will notice that now we have a toolbar with two pointed corners and two rounded corners. Whilst holding the shift button, select both layers within the layers window, right click one of the layers and select the merge layers option. Now we have one layer for